at 4,500 feet, at 2,500 feet, approaching 1,500 feet, watch the air overrun it. Mike. Let us now go back and examine the evidence and point up the statistical highlights of that device. Remember those final last seconds? Five, four, three, two, one, T zero. This is the largest fireball ever produced. At its maximum, it measures about three and one quarter miles in diameter. Compared to the skyline of New York, this means that with the Empire State Building as zero point, the Mike Fireball would extend downtown to Washington Square and uptown to Central Park. In other words, the Fireball alone would engulf about one quarter of the island of Manhattan. The tremendous upsurge of air from the detonation rapidly pushes up the Mike Cloud. Again, nothing of this height and width has ever before been witnessed. If the picture is stopped at this point in the cloud's growth, the height of the cloud is approximately 40,000 feet. This means that 32 Empire State buildings at 1,250 feet per building could be piled one on top of the other before they would attain the cloud's height at this time, roughly two minutes after zero. Some 10 minutes later, the cloud approaches its maximum. At this time, the mushroom portion of the cloud has pushed up to around 10 miles and spreads out along the base of the stratosphere to a width of about 100 miles, while the stem itself is pushed upward deep into the stratosphere to a height of about 25 miles. Later figures put the mic yield at around 10 megatons or 10,000 kilotons. This means there was more energy released in this one shot, roughly 10 times more, than in all previous atomic blasts combined, including probably those of Russian origin. Or to put it another way, four times more power in this one shot than from all the high explosives dropped by the entire Anglo-American Air Force on Germany and the occupied countries during the last war. The results of this tremendous power can be shown at the Atoll. Here is an aerial photo of the test area of the Atoll before the blast. And here is the same area after the blast, showing the crater caused by Mike. The outlined island in the center is former Ilugilab, the Zero Island. Sections of the islands on either side have been chopped off. The crater is roughly a mile in diameter. When it is illustrated that some 14 Pentagon buildings could be comfortably accommodated in this hole, the size of the Mike crater becomes more real. In profile, the crater gradually slopes down to a maximum depth of some 175 feet, or equivalent to the height of a 17-story building. 
The lateral destructive effects are the greatest yet observed from a single explosive device. Without getting into the areas of target evaluation or secondary effects, it can be safely assumed that there was complete annihilation within a radius of three miles or out to and including all of Enjabi, that there was severe to moderate damage out to seven miles or down to Rujoro, and that light damage extended as far as 10 miles or down to Runnin. Relating this area of damage to a city like Washington, D.C., would present a picture something like this. With the capital as zero point, there would be complete annihilation west to Arlington Cemetery, east to the Anacostia River, north to the soldiers' home, and south to Bowling Field. Complete annihilation, and that is mentioning merely the primary damage.